Hi, I'm Alex Jacopi, Principal Trumpet of the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra. We're going to learn how to properly hold the trumpet. So first of all, what you want to do is grab the valve casing, which I'm showing you right here, with your left hand and put your ring finger in the third valve slide ring. So you can see I'm putting my ring finger in here and I'm wrapping the rest of my hand around the valve casing. So not all trumpets are gonna have a first valve slide saddle like this. If you do, you wanna put your thumb, this is your left thumb in there. And so you have your left thumb in the first valve slide saddle and your ring finger in the third valve slide ring. So that's the basic position that you hold the trumpet with in your left hand. Now, you'll see sometimes people turn their wrist a lot like this or a lot like that. You probably just want to keep this part of your wrist fairly straight so when you hold it the that your arm doesn't you're not bending your wrist too much. Now, with the right hand, what you want to do is take your thumb and put it in the space between the first and the second valve casing. So I'm putting my thumb in there and then the first three fingers will go over the top of each of the valves. Now there's always a question, do you put your pinky in the pinky ring or not? Um, I don't really mind doing it either in or or on top. I don't think it really matters one way or the other as long as you're not using the pinky ring to create pressure on the mouthpiece on your lips. So you don't want to be pulling on this ring. So we want to have as little tension in our right hand as possible. And that's probably best achieved by leaving the pinky on top of the, the pinky ring. So now the right hand position, you want to imagine that you're making a, a backwards C shape. So your fingers are just kind of slightly bent like this and they set right on top of the valves. So you're pushing the valves straight down. So to recap, the proper way to hold the trumpet, in your left hand, put your ring finger in the third valve slide ring, your thumb in the first valve slide saddle if you have one, wrist fairly straight, not bent too much down or too much up, right hand position, you want to put your thumb between the first and second valve casings, your pinky probably on top of the pinky ring, and then your fingers directly over the valve casings. So this is the proper way to hold the trumpet. You can see it from this side. And now the other side. A properly formed embouchure and good placement of the mouthpiece are probably the most important factors to have success as a trumpet player. Getting the embouchure set and the mouthpiece in a good spot on the embouchure from the beginning can really set up a young player for success. Good mouthpiece placement in particular is really essential to tone, range, and endurance. And it's, it's really amazing how in that very first moment when a student is starting out, how wherever that mouthpiece lands on their lips suddenly becomes normal. So it's very important to get the position of the mouthpiece and the formation of the embouchure um, fundamentally sound um, from the beginning stages of playing. So when I have young students form their embouchures for the first time, I have them start out by making the M sound. So, mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah, good. So what this does 
is it gets your lips to roll in a little bit. Imagine that this part of my finger, this part of my finger is the more fleshy part of the lips here. And then up here is the, the skin. So you want that fleshy part less exposed. So making the M sound, mmm, mmm, gets the lips to roll in a little bit, which is good for forming the embouchure. It also encourages firmness all around here, which is going to be essential to good mouthpiece placement. So start out by making the M sound, mmm, mmm, mmm. And then continue that feeling without vocalizing the M and blow air across your lips. Good. So it's almost like you're going from M mm to poof. The next step would be to Continue that, blowing air across the lips that are forming the, the M sound, and see if you can get your lips to vibrate on their own. You might have a little trouble with this right at the beginning. It's nothing to worry about, but this lip vibration is going to be the, the core of making the sound on the trumpet or any brass instrument for that matter. So now we want to try to introduce the mouthpiece to this M sound or lip buzzing. Mmm. <laughs> So there's always a question of where do you put the mouthpiece on your lips? Well, I don't worry too much about the, um, the horizontal placement, the left to right, because everybody's teeth are different and you're likely going to try to find a spot from left to right that gets you off a high spot on a tooth or something that might be a little bit uncomfortable. So as long as somebody's not, you know, wildly to the one side or wildly to the other side, I don't worry too much about the left to right placement. What is really important is the vertical placement of the mouthpiece, you know, how high or how low it is. And it's most important to get the inside edge of the top of the rim. So what I'm talking about is this part right here. The inside edge of the top of the rim has to be above the fleshy part of your lip. So when you're making the M sound, mm, you're rolling your lips in slightly, which exposes less of the fleshy part of your lip. And then when you place the mouthpiece on your lips, you wanna make sure the inside edge inner edge of the top of the rim is above the fleshy part of your, your lip. So I'm going, mmm, mmm. Another important thing for embouchure um, construction and mouthpiece placement is you want to try to have the bottom be as flat as possible. This is going to provide a really good anchor point for the mouthpiece. The bottom lip can withstand a lot more pressure from the mouthpiece than the top lip. And where players run into endurance issues is most often caused by jamming the trumpet and the mouthpiece into their lips. So if you can make the main anchor point of the mouthpiece, the bottom, 
it relieves some of the pressure off the top lip. Now, this wouldn't is not going to work for absolutely everybody because certain people have overbites, underbites. You might have to adjust that slightly, but as a rule, it's good to have the main point of contact be the bottom lip. This will result in what I would consider slightly downstream angle of the trumpet. So you can see the horn is going down. It's not totally parallel with the floor. It's not angled too much up or too much down. It's just slightly down. So to, to review, um, good embouchure formation can start with making an M sound. Mmm. Mmm. Then blowing some air through that M sound. Allowing the lips to vibrate a little bit with faster airflow. And then introducing the mouthpiece to that and making sure that the inside edge of the top of the rim is above the fleshy part of your lip. 